we are going to continue on um, the topic that um, um, we started two weeks ago. And it is um, voices. Pastor Tola started with um, taking us through why voices are powerful and important. We learned that God's voice gives direction. That God's voice helps us to achieve destiny. We also learned that the voice of God builds our faith. We learned that hearing God gives us good success. Last week, um, we spoke about, it talked about how we have our inner voices. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes it gives you encouragement. Sometimes it will create anxiety. We also learned that sometimes it pulls up, sometimes it elevates. We also learned about other people's voices. We learned that it's important to pay attention to only the voice that gives you encouragement and hope. Praise the Lord. So today we are going to continue with the same topic. And today I will be speaking about God is still speaking. Praise the Lord. Please help me tell your neighbor, God is still speaking. He's still speaking. God is still speaking. Praise the Lord. Now, as a believer and a child of God, it is important for you to realize that only God has a say in your life. Praise the Lord. It is important for you to know the voice of God. It is important for you to realize when he is speaking to you. Because God is always speaking. And even as I'm standing here, he is still Speaking, praise God. Now, we are going to be reading the Bible quite a bit. If you don't mind, please open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1 to 3. And multimedia, please help us. I am reading the God's Word version. It says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors at many different times and in many different ways through the prophets. In the last days, he has spoken to us through his son. God made his son responsible for everything. His son is the one through whom God made the universe. Verse 3, it says, His Son is the reflection of God's glory and the exact likeness of God's being. He holds everything together through His powerful words after He had cleansed people from their sins. He now holds the honored position, the one next to the majestic God on the heavenly throne. Praise the Lord. Why would you not want to hear the voice of someone that is sitting right next to God? If there's any voice that we want to hear, that's the voice of Jesus, right? Praise the Lord. And we know that in John chapter 1, the word of God would say to us, the scriptures tells us that Jesus is the word. And the word was with God. And then the word came to the world. Even though the world did not recognize him, it did not change who he was. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. We'll lay some foundation. Hebrews 12. Now, it's talking about now. Right? At first, he told us about how God spoke to us in the past. And he told us, Hebrews chapter 1, from 1 to 3 that we read, 
told us about how God is speaking to us now through his son. Hebrews 12.22. It says, Instead you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. You have come to tens of thousands of angels joyfully gathered together and to the assemble of God's firstborn children, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to a judge, the God of all people, and to the spirits of people who have God's approval and have gained eternal life. You have come to Jesus. That's where you have come this morning. You have come to Jesus who brings the new promise from God, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. It says, be careful that you do not refuse to listen to, be careful that you do not refuse to listen when God speaks. It says again, be careful that you do not refuse to listen when God speaks. Your ancestors did not escape when they refused to listen to God. Who wants them on earth? We will not escape if we turn away from God. Who wants us from heaven? Praise the Lord. So this morning, tell your neighbor again, God is speaking. God is speaking. At every point in our life, in my life and in your life, God speaks. Sometimes we wonder how he speaks. And he does speak in so many different ways. The most important thing is to know when he is the one speaking. Because if it is your inner voice, you're going to hear what you want to hear. You know, if you're hungry and you have not eaten, you will think it's God speaking. But really, it's your stomach rumbling. Praise the Lord. So when God is speaking to you, you have to know when he is doing so. And how would you know what God is saying to you? All of it is in the word of God. Every word that God speaks to you and I, you can find in the word of God. When he speaks, you check it. When you hear a voice, you check it with the word of God. If you don't mind again, let's look at the word of God in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. That's the scripture that speaks about Every scripture, 2 Timothy 2, it says every scripture passage is inspired by God. All of them are useful for teaching, for pointing out errors, correcting people, training them for a life that has God's approval. Please go to verse 17. And what does the scripture do? They equip God's servant. And that's all of us. Praise the Lord. You are a child of God. You are a servant of God because he can send you on an errand. Praise God. They equip God's servants so that they are completely prepared to do good things. Praise God. So that's what the word of God does. It equips you. It corrects you. It directs you. It teaches you where to go. It tells you don't go on 695. It tells you you need to stay at home today. It says, wait a minute, I want to have a word with you. And that's the word of God speaking to you. Now, sometimes we don't get it. Why don't we get it? That takes us to the second, um, to number two. If God is speaking, why can't we hear him? Praise the Lord. It is because, number two, we need to train our ears. So, number two, train your, train your, now let's go to where that is, it's in the Bible. Like I said, today, I have no words. We are going to be reading the Bible together. 
Because that's the only way that you and I will know when God is talking to us. Praise God. Now, every Bible passage that we read, we are only reading it in bits and pieces. We are not reading everything. I want to ask of everyone that can hear me, don't let it be that you only talk to God or you open the Bible when you are in church or you open the Bible during um, live groups or, you know, some people join a whole lot of other um, fellowship. Don't let that be the only time that you open the Bible because the only way that you're going to know the voice that is talking to you is when you know him through his word. Praise God. Now, um, we're reading John 10, right? I'm going to back up a little bit. It says, John 10, 3 says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep respond to his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out of the pen. After he has brought out all of his sheep, he walks ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. The sheep follow him because why? Again, why does the sheep follow? Thank you. Verse 5 says they will not follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from a stranger because they do not recognize his voice. Praise the Lord. Now, Let's go to verse 25. This is Jesus answering some people that kept on asking him questions over and over again. Let me leave them alone. I'll go to verse 26. It says, however, you don't believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep respond to my voice and I know who they are. They follow me. Isn't that reassuring? Isn't it reassuring that God knows who you are? Praise the Lord. Speak it to yourself. God knows who I am. I am known by God. Praise the Lord. So you need to train your ears to hear when God is speaking. Because if you know the voice of God, you know, when you look through the Bible, when, when, when God was... Um, when he was one in the churches in Revelations chapter 2, he would, you know, he praised some, he rebuked some, he encouraged some, but every time he spoke, he said, let him who have ears do what? Every time he would say something to them, he would say, let anyone that has ears, because the fact that you have ears does not mean you can hear. That's just the simple matter. I mean, sometimes we are even in the service and we are every word, you know, a whole lot of the word, you know, just pass by. You know, even right now, someone could be thinking, ah, I need to leave this place on time because there will be too many people at Walmart. Today is the last Sunday before Thanksgiving. I'm telling you. And another person is like, oh, Sam's Club will be full. I need to go do the rest of my shopping. Oh, okay, yes, I have the turkey. They put one in my trunk. But, hey, I need to go get the rest of the things. And all of this, the service is going on. Praise the Lord. So you must train. <laughs> Praise God. You must train your ears to hear from God. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to go to number three. After you have trained your ears to go and your whole being to hear from God, you have to allow God to speak to you. Allow God to, allow God to speak to you. Now, don't assume that you know how he's going to speak. Because he could speak to you in one way today. And another day, it could be speaking in another way. Praise the Lord. The most important thing is to recognize the voice of the person that is talking. Praise God. 
And I know that from personal experience. There was a day I came into church, and usually when I come in, I go around the classrooms to make sure that the teachers are in the classroom. And on this particular day, I went inside some classes, and there were no teachers. And I was getting kind of frustrated, and I really don't like getting frustrated before I come in to hear the word. Because if I'm frustrated, I have to take a long time to get myself back to where I can hear whatever is being said. So I went inside one of the classrooms, and that's the baby class, the nest. I went inside that classroom to pray. And as I was praying, all I was saying is, God, I need your grace. I need your grace. Your grace is enough for me. I need your grace. And I sat down there. Um, my eyes were closed. I was praying. A little girl, about five years old, she entered the classroom, and I heard her father saying, that's not your class. And she came into the class and sat down with me. <laughs> so I opened my eyes, and our dad said, you are disturbing pastor. <laughs> and she sat down there. So I opened my eyes, and I said, hey, how are you? What's your name? And she said, Grace. I said, God, <laughs> really? I mean, like, just like that? I couldn't tell the dad. I, if he can hear me now, he will know the full story. I couldn't say anything to the dad, but I teared up. I was just like, God, you... You didn't just answer. You brought grace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I told the dad, I said, I will check grace in. I will take grace to class. <laughs> you can go inside the service. Praise the Lord. So you have to allow God to speak to you. If I was waiting for some, you know, whatever else I was waiting for. If, even if I didn't open my eyes, if I thought, what is wrong with this little girl? Can't you see I'm praying, right? I would never have found out that that was grace. Praise God. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. It says, I will stand at my guard post. I will station myself on the wall. I will watch to see what he will say to me. Abacock had been praying. And isn't that what we call prayer? Conversation with... Now, when you have a conversation with God, when do you keep quiet and allow him to give you a response? Praise God. Am I talking to anybody this morning? When we talk, when you have a conversation and you know, the prayer, the fasting and everything, have you ever thought of it like, at what point do I wait for God to respond? Or do you even wait for God to respond? Or you just pray and then you just, you know, like, you know, you keep on going. You have done what you're supposed to do. You have to wait for God to respond. And when God responds to your prayers, it may be in an unusual way. It may not necessarily be in the way that you have prayed that prayer. It may not be specific about the answer that you are asking for. Um, there are so many things that... When, as I prepared this message, a whole lot of things just kept coming as to how God has answered prayers that, you know, it was not the way that I expected him to answer. But I knew it was his answer, right? Because he told me, like, we're not going to do it your way. This is how we are going to do it. So I knew that it was the answer to the prayers. Praise the Lord. 
And once you've trained your ears to know when God is speaking, you will know when God is doing something in your life. It will be very clear that it is God. You know, but all that will come from knowing the word of God. I have to keep taking you back to the word of God. I had gone for an interview once in my life. And I was talking to somebody, the person that was interviewing me, a very, very important interview. And the lady, I don't know what I had said, but I mean, she was, she, she was very angry. Actually, I know what I had said, but I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Praise God. She was, she was very angry. And so she called someone else into the interview. And so they were talking. The moment she called someone, I knew it was over. I knew there was nothing I was going to say. I had failed this interview. So she called someone else and they started talking. And the other person she called said, can you go outside and wait for us outside? As soon as I got outside, I went to a wall. I said, God, I'm in trouble. You said you will be with me in trouble. And God, this is trouble. And, and that was all I said. <laughs> and then they called me back into the interview. And when I got back into the interview, the lady that was interviewing me looked at me and said, um, you know what? Just forget you came today. Reschedule your interview. And if you come back here, and you see me, just tell them I'm biased and you don't want to see me. <laughs> Isn't that God? If you know the word of God, he keeps his word. He exalts his word above his name. He says, I watch over my word to perform it. When he speaks, he watches over what he has said. To ensure us that it comes to pass. Praise the Lord. You have to know. You listen. When you listen to God. When you allow him to speak. Allow him to speak. In situations that are unusual. There's this. Um, it's Moses, right? In Exodus, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. When you look at it from verse 1 to 3. It talks about Moses. God wanted to talk to Moses. You know, you would have thought God should just have said, Moses, 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 right? Because he's done that quite a number of times. He will call somebody three times. Abimbala, Abimbala, Abimbala. But he didn't do that. Moses was on his way to work. Who knew if he was late? That was when God decided he wanted to talk to him. But Moses did something that most of us don't do. He saw something that was unusual. He saw that the bush was burning. But it was not consumed. You can imagine in a dry land, you see that, you know, the grass should have caught fire. But the grasses were still there. They were not burnt. And so instead of Moses to work like, you know, I need to get, you know, I need to get going. He said, let me turn. Can, can we go to, um, it says the message, the, the messenger of the Lord appeared to him there as flames of fire coming out of a bush. Moses looked and although the bush was on fire, it was not burning up. Praise the Lord. Now verse three. So he thought. Why isn't this bush burning up? I must go over and see this strange sight. Praise the Lord. And what happened after he stopped to see the strange sight? Can we go to 4? Verse 4. When the, Lord, when the Lord saw that Moses had come over to see, God called to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, Moses. Oh, he called only twice. Moses, Moses. Moses answered, here I am. Now, it tells you that God can use anything to talk to you. 
Because if Moses did not stop, I believe that God would not speak. It's going to have to happen on another day. If Moses had decided that he was late and he needed to get to work, it wouldn't have happened on that day. Praise the Lord. So don't assume you know how God is going to speak to you. Be ready to receive God whichever way he comes to talk to you. But just make sure it is God that is speaking. Praise the Lord. Because if it is not God that is speaking, something else will speak and it will not be what God wants you to do. Praise God. Now, God could be speaking and it may not be convenient. In Acts chapter 9, from verse 13 to 15, God, um, God was talking to Ananias. Um, you can read the Bible. I mean, so I think the one thing to take away from what's going to happen in this month is to get closer to the Word of God. When you get home, open your Bible and say, let me see, did what Pastor Bimbo said, is it in the Bible or not? That's what I want you to do. I want you to go check anything and everything that I say with the word of God. Praise God. In Acts chapter, um, chapter 9, from 13 to 15, Jesus Christ, the word himself, appeared to Ananias and said to him to go and do something that totally was like a death sentence. He told him to go and receive Saul. I mean, Saul was someone that was persecuting Christians. But that's what God wanted him to do. And Ananias argued for a little bit, like, but do you know this guy? He's going to kill me. But, you know, he knew the voice of Jesus. He knew it was Jesus speaking to him. And he said, and it reassured him and said, no. He's not going to kill you. I have spoken to him. He's become one of mine. And that's God speaking. And that's Ananias knowing the voice of the one that is speaking to him. Praise the Lord. Now, if it was someone that did not know God, as soon as that voice came, it would start fasting and praying and would be saying, I bind you. In the name of the almighty God, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I will not hear your voice. I will not be, it is a trap. I will not be killed. I will not fall into the trap of the devil. If he did not know that it was God that was speaking, that's where it would end. And he would not have done it. And you know what? If Saul was not converted, I don't know what would have happened to you and I. Because he was the one that ran with the gospel. It was the one that was not afraid to go because he had steered fear. It was the fear that they were fearing. And so he had nothing to fear, praise the Lord. So he needed someone to listen and he brought the fear into the fold, praise God. That's when, when they tell you what you are fearing, he's afraid of you. Praise God. Now, Let's go to, yes, I like this one, because I think I might be able to take two more, so I have to choose the two. Let's go to turn down the noise. Turn down, turn down, turn down the noise in your life. Turn down the volume. It's too loud. It is taking over everything. I'm not saying don't watch television. Although I can tell you that I hardly ever watch television. Because I think good news does not sell. Every time you want to listen to the news, it's some horrible thing happening somewhere. Turn down the noise. You know, if there's something that you can use to like a noise, something that cancels the noise in your spirit. 
you need something to cancel that noise so that you can hear. Sometimes we think God is in the drama. It could be in the drama, but he's not definitely going to take part in your drama. Even Jesus Christ, from time to time, he had to go to a quiet place to recharge. How much more, you and I, if Jesus needed to recharge so that it can be more effective, how much more, you and I? And the, the, the scripture that I brought out was 1 Kings 19. And 1 Kings 19 is about Elijah. We all know Elijah. He was a mighty prophet. But a woman threatened him. And he began to say all sorts of things out of his mouth. Oh, God, you know, if you want to do this, you can do it now. Um, just kill me right now. Um, somebody is trying to kill me. And God came and said, okay, go and wait for me on the mountain. Praise the Lord. That's some 1 Kings 19, 11. God said to him, go out and stand in front of the Lord on the mountain. And as the Lord was passing by, a fierce wind tore the mountains and shattered rocks ahead of the Lord. But the Lord was not in the... After the wind came and... After the wind came and... But the Lord was not in the... But the Lord wasn't in... And then came fire, right? Right? And the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, what, where, did, where did Lord show up? Lord showed up in quietness. You have to shut down the voices that are not saying what God is saying in your life. Because God is still speaking. There are voices that are saying all sorts of things to you, but God is still speaking. Because we are human, sometimes, even when we are talking to ourselves, we have something to say, so we want to say it, and we don't allow the other person to really finish. But in this case, if it is God that is speaking, you have to tell yourself before you start saying, uh-oh, before you start saying, um, you know, when something happens and they say in everything, give thanks because this is the will of God for your life. Tell that voice, God is still speaking. You don't know the will of God until it is over. For as long, the doctor gives you a report and they say, this is the will of God for your life. No, it is not the will of God because God is still, God is not done speaking and for as long as God has not done speaking, you cannot accept anything and everything that comes your way because that is not the final say. Who has the final say? Who has the final say? For as long as God is still talking, don't try to help God. Don't fill in the gaps for God. You need to listen to what God is saying to you. To know that he has your interest at heart. And he's not going to leave you hanging, praise the Lord. He's not going to allow anything to happen to you. Those are the moments when you say, God, you said with long life you will satisfy me. Those are the moments when you bring back the word of God, irrespective of what you can see. I'm not saying don't go for your treatment. I'm not saying they say you failed a class. I'm not saying don't study. But as you're looking at that, you are saying, he who began a good work in me, he is faithful to complete it. You are saying anything that I start, I will finish. You know, you are speaking back to this situation because that is what God has said concerning that situation. 
You have to know when God is still speaking. And when God is still speaking, you need to tell every other voice. Every other voice needs to remain silent. You tell every voice in your life that is speaking when God has not spoken. You say to every voice, you need to be quiet. Because it is not over yet. Because God is still... In your life, God is still... God is still... He has not done speaking. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that you have the mind of Christ. The Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please, when you get home, read the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, No man knows the spirit of man except the man himself. It's the same way we do not know the spirit of Christ. Only Christ knows his own spirit. Unless to the person whom it is revealed. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 ended with, we have the mind of Christ. So I want to tell you this morning that you have the mind of Christ. Say to your neighbor, I have the mind of Christ. I can hear his voice. I know when he is speaking to me. I will listen more for his voice. Every voice needs to be quiet. When God is still, every voice needs to be quiet. When God is still, now tell your neighbor again, God is still speaking. In my life, God is still speaking. He's not done yet. So be quiet. God is still speaking. Shall we rise to our feet this morning? Praise the Lord.